In our previous video, we looked at how rotational motion is produced in an armature when it is placed within a magnetic field. And in this video, we're going to look at some slightly more practical examples, uh, because what we find is, in the case of DC motors, the magnetic field that's applied is actually produced by an electromagnet as well. So here I have a diagram of a DC motor where not only is the armature a current carrying loop, like we saw in our previous example, but we also have a circuit that powers the field windings as well, which produce an electromagnetic field. Now in truth, in a DC motor, these would not be separate circuits. And what we will see in this video is two different examples of DC motors where the armature and the field windings actually share the same circuit. Here's the first example, which is called a DC series motor. And as you can see in the diagram on the right, the armature and the field are all connected in one big series circuit. We have the field windings on the outside here, which produce the magnetic field. And we also have our current carrying armature, which rotates between them. On the left hand side here, we can represent that as a simple circuit diagram. So we have, first of all, our field windings, which we've represented by this coil in the circuit here. And we also have our armature. And the armature, just for the purpose of our calculations, we've separated into two components, but we can think of them both as being the armature. The reason we've done this is because the armature itself has a resistance, which we're going to take into account. Even though it's just a wire, we know that it's still going to have some resistive property to it. And we're going to represent this by RA. So RA represents the resistance of the armature. Secondly, we have the armature itself. The reason why we've given the armature its own component here is not immediately apparent. But what happens in this circuit is, first of all, we have our battery on the left-hand side here, which is going to produce a voltage. And that voltage is going to produce a current in our circuit, and the current's going to travel through the field windings and through the armature. And hopefully, like we talked about in our previous video, that's going to produce a force which encourages the armature to start rotating. But once the armature starts to rotate, it actually produces its own voltage, or the proper term is EMF, electromotive force. And that EMF is in the opposite direction to the supply voltage. And this is a really important feature of DC motors. So I'll mark this on here as EB. It's the back EMF of the motor. The back EMF of a motor is actually really important for two reasons. First of all, it prevents the current in the motor from getting too high and burning out the windings. But it also gives us a good indication of the power and the torque of the motor. Let's have a look at a worked example where we calculate the back EMF of a DC series motor and then use that to calculate other parameters of the motor as well. So for the purpose of our example, I've put some component values on our circuit here. First of all, we've said that we have a supply voltage, that battery on the left hand side, of 12 volts. And we've said that our field windings have a resistance of 18 ohms. Our armature has a resistance of 1.2 ohms. And then we know that our armature is also going to produce a back EMF when it moves. Before we think about that, though, let's calculate something called the stall current. And the stall current is the current that flows in the circuit when the armature is not moving. So we can imagine that we've just switched this motor on, for example, and the armature has not quite started to move yet. In, in the split second before the armature starts to move, EB must be zero, because EB, the back EMF, is produced by the rotation of the armature. So if the armature is not moving, EB is, is zero. So all we have to worry about is the voltage of the supply and the resistance of the field and armature windings. So to calculate current, we can just use Ohm's law as we would normally. We can say that 
the current I, or I stall as I've marked it here, the stall current, is V over R. And we know in this case that V is 12. And we know that the total resistance is these two resistances in series. We've got 18 ohms for the field windings. We've got 1.2 ohms for the armature resistance. And so we know that the total resistance must be 19.2 ohms. So calculating that, I get an answer of 625 milliamps. Let's say, though, that I allow my motor to run up to full speed. And what we'll find is that as the motor uh, gets to its full speed, EB increases also as the armature speed increases. And what happens is because EB is a voltage that opposes, it's in the opposite direction to the supply voltage, it prevents the current from being as high as the stall current. It actually reduces the current. Uh, by cancelling out some of that supply voltage. And so let's say that we have our motor run up to full speed and we're going to see the current reduce in the circuit. Let's say that the current now reduces to just 100 milliamps. Because I'm letting my motor run freely, it, it doesn't have a, a load attached to it, it's not working. Um, we're going to say that this is called the no load current. So I'm marking that I N L. It's not driving a load. I'm just allowing my motor to run freely. Uh, and we, we get a current of 100 milliamps in that case. So the no load current of 100 milliamps. So knowing that no load current, and I'll just make another note of it at the top here. So I N L is 100 milliamps. Knowing that current, we can now start to think about calculating the back EMF in this motor. And to do that, we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law. Because we know that the supply of this circuit, the supply voltage, must equal the sum of the voltages dropped in this circuit. And so what we can say is that the back EMF, EB, must be equal to the supply voltage, Vs, minus the voltages that we've dropped along the way. We're going to drop a voltage here in the field windings, and so I'm going to call that VF. And we're also going to drop a voltage here across the resistance of the armature, and so I'm going to call that VA. So VS minus VF minus VA. So if we think about it, starting with 12 volts from the battery, I drop some of that voltage here across the field windings. I drop some of that voltage here across the resistance of the armature. Whatever voltage is left must be the back EMF. And so hence my formula, the back EMF is the supply voltage minus the voltage across the field windings minus the voltage across the resistance of the armature. Well, whilst we know the voltage of the supply, we don't know the voltage dropped across the field windings, and we don't know the voltage dropped across the resistance of the armature. And so for these two parameters, we have to use Ohm's law to calculate them, because we know the current and we know the resistance of each. So our formula ends up looking more like this. Using Ohm's law, we can express Vf as the current multiplied by the resistance of the field windings. So we have the current here INL, which is the current flowing through the circuit, multiplied by the field windings. And similarly, in this uh, last section here for VA, the voltage across the resistance of the armature, I'm doing the same thing again. I'm using Ohm's law to say that it's the current multiplied by the resistance of the armature. So let's put some values in here, because we can say, first of all, Vs is 12, 12 volts is our supply, minus INL, which we said is 100 milliamps, well I need to express that in amps, so that's 0 0.1 amps, multiplied by RF, the resistance of the field, which we said is 18, minus the same thing again, INL, 0 0.1, this time multiplied by the resistance of the armature, which is 1.2. And if I calculate that, I get an answer of 10.08 volts. 
Now that I know this, I can calculate the electrical power of the armature because we know the formula P equals I times V. Well, the current flowing through the armature is the same as the current flowing through every other part of the circuit. It's a series circuit, so I can say that that's 0 0.1 multiplied by what we've worked out to be the back EMF of the armature, which is, in this case, 10.08 volts. And calculating that gives me an answer of 1.008 watts or roughly one watt of power in the armature. So in our example, we've calculated that the back EMF EB is 10.08 volts. And we've also gone on to calculate that the power in the armature is equal to 1.008 watts. Let's also say in our example that our motor has reached its full speed and its full speed we give uh, the letter N for speed and its full speed is 500 RPM so revolutions per minute. The reason I mention this is because there's another formula for power which looks like this uh, P equals 2 pi N T over 60 and we've just mentioned there that N is our term for speed. T is a term that we've mentioned in a previous video for torque. And P is obviously for power. Now we can use this formula not to work out power because we've already done that. But we can rearrange this formula because we can use it to work out the torque of the motor. So if we rearrange this formula, we get something like this. We can say that T torque equals 60 times P over 2 pi N. And if I put some values in for this formula, we can say first of all uh, 60 times P, well that's going to be 60 times 1.008 over uh, 2 pi N, which we said 2 pi times N is going to be 500 and calculating that gives me a torque of 0 0.019 and we said the torque is measured in newton meters. I hope you found this video useful on how we can calculate parameters in a DC series motor. In our next video we're going to look at a different way that the windings in a motor can be connected together in the form of what's called a DC shunt motor. And we'll look at a similar example there as well.